Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back everybody to chapter six. Chapter six has three examples in it, example six, example seven, example eight. And in the next three lectures, we're going to do each example in some detail. So let's get started. Example six is a projectile problem. So we have a particle of mass m that's launched with an initial speed v naught at an angle alpha with respect to the horizontal. So our coordinates will be the usual x, y, z coordinates. Horizontal will be x and y, vertical distance z. The only force acting on the particle is gravity. Okay, that we're going to compute the position of the particle at any time, the time to reach the highest point of the trajectory, the maximum height that the particle reaches, the time of flight back to the Earth, assuming it's launched from the Earth, but that's uh, the language we're going to use, and the range. The range is the largest horizontal distance that the particle travels. And this is the geometry. Particle is denoted by P. Position vector R of T. Alpha is the angle with respect to the initial velocity, V naught. And we assume that the initial velocity vector is in the YZ plane. And we can make this choice for the initial velocity vectors in a, in a plane, call it the YZ plane, without loss of generality because the two vectors, r of t, position vector, and v, define a plane. And we'll take that to be the yz plane. They're in the yz plane. Okay, so we write down Newton's second law, and this is it. We can divide out m on both sides. Remember, the second derivative of r with respect to t twice is dv dt, v is velocity. We can integrate that once. Remember that the constant of integration is a vector. We assume that at t equals zero, we've been given the velocity. It's in the yz plane, so v naught cosine alpha j plus v naught sine alpha k. We plug that into the equation for the to evaluate the vector constant, and this is what we get. Okay, we integrate that one more time from zero to t, because at time zero, the particle is launched from the origin, so it's zero, and we want to know its location at any t. And we get this expression, and we can also write it in components. So x equals zero, no component of force in the x direction. It remains zero forever. We always stay in that plane. So the first question is the time to reach the highest point. What? Now we have to ask, what does that mean, highest point? It goes up, up, up with some velocity, and it stops going up when its velocity in the vertical direction is zero. And... velocity in the vertical direction. So we set that equal to zero and we get this expression for the time to reach the highest point. Now if we want to find the maximum height reached, we plug in the position. We go back to the position as a function of time. Okay. And we plug in the value of t for the time to reach the highest point and that's what you're seeing here. And we get this expression. Okay, now the time of flight back to the Earth. It goes up, it goes down. We go to the position, vertical position, as a function of time. We set that equal to zero. 
goes up, comes down. We get two solutions as a quadratic. T, we can factor out the T. T equals zero is one solution, but that's just Z equals zero. It starts at zero. And this is what we get. And look at this. The time to go up and down is twice the time to go reach to the highest point, which we would expect. Okay, the range. All right. So the range, it, the particle goes up, is launched, it goes up, it comes down, and the, mo and the motion is over. So that time, we plug that into the expression for the y, distance is a function of time, and we get this expression. So, that's it for this problem. Think about, we, we derived the equation to motion, but we had to ask why each question, we were asked a question, but what did it mean in terms of the mathematical expression for the equation's motion? So think about that issue. And then think about alpha. You know, alpha zero means we've launched it horizontally. Alpha pi over two means we launched it straight up. And then we could keep go past pi over 2 and launch it backwards, in a sense. Anyway, when you have these parameters in the problem, it's a really good practice to go think about what do they all mean, and we'll get some practice in the exercises at the end of the chapter. So bye for now.